Hello church family and Bethel friends. It's so good to be back tonight. I just want to thank the Lord tonight for watching over me and my family over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've gone through the COVID and um, I just said I'm, I'm just so blessed and uh, all of us were. We, we have had light uh, and mild symptoms and all and actually I've had colds that have been worse than the coronavirus that I experienced but I thank you for your prayers. It's so good to get out of quarantine. I was telling everybody, they said, you got fever? I said, oh, I've had a terrible fever. I said, but it's cabin fever. I can't stand staying inside. I want to be outside. So it's good to be back. And tonight, guys, we're going to be looking into the Word of God. Uh, I want you to have your Bibles tonight for this message because I want you to be able to share some of these truths out of the Word of God with some of your family members and best friends and maybe people you work with and all people who are worried and anxious and all. And I, I want to tell you, I just have been so disappointed in so many things that have been happening in this world and in our country and in our elections. And then I, I just, uh, you know, if I lived on the earth side of things, I, I won't tell you, I, I wouldn't be, I don't think I'd even want to live. But I want to tell you, I'm so glad to be a child of our Heavenly Father and to be a partaker of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But tonight, I, I want us to deal and just to talk, and I don't have any sermon notes and all, I don't have my sermon written out or anything like that. It's just from my heart, right out of the Word of God. Take your Bibles, get your Bibles, and we're going to look over in the Old Testament to the book of Second. Chronicles, Second Chronicles, and we're going to read just a couple of verses to start off with down in chapter 20, Second Chronicles, uh, Second Chronicles 20, and verses 12 through 14. <clears throat> the Bible tells us about a, uh, a king, the king of Judah, the kingdom of, uh, of, of uh, Judah and the kingdom of Israel were divided at this time. The Ahab was the king of Jerusalem or of Israel, and uh, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And uh, it says down in verse 12 that, uh, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord, along with their little ones, their wives, and their children. And then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, Upon him came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. I don't think I have ever gone through and the things that we've gone through in this last year, both in the world, in our country, uh, in our uh, political situation, in our uh, the with the pandemic with the people, the loss of jobs, the transition and change that we have gone through in our nation and in this world. I don't think I, ha I know I have never been through times like this. And uh, we have to be ready for the transitions of life and the things that come our way. But I love, I, I wanted to read that first text tonight because uh, I have preached this message before in three or four different places uh, pertaining to the spiritual needs of America and the Church of Jesus Christ today here in, in America. But tonight I want to deal with this because I feel like every one of us have, have somebody that we know and somebody that, love, that we love very much. It may be some of you that are listening tonight. But when you hear the message, you're going to think of somebody that you need to share this this Bible story with. And so uh, I love what uh, uh, the king said. He said, uh, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. 
And that's what I want to challenge myself. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge uh, all of our listeners tonight. As we look around and we, we, we start sizing up all the changes and the, the difficulties and the storm clouds. I, I wrote a note the other day. You guys will get it in the mail in a couple of days. But I said, I see the storm clouds beginning to rise uh, around America and around the church. And I know that we have some dark days coming down ahead. And I want us to be prepared and I want us to be ready. But what do you do when you don't know what to do? That's what we're going to talk about tonight. I want you to turn back with me to Second uh, Chronicles chapter 18. And looking down in verse 1, it says, Now Jehoshaphat, he was the, he was the king of Judah. Uh, now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance, and he joined affinity with Ahab. Now Ahab happened to be the king of Israel and lived in Jerusalem. And everybody has heard in the Bible about wicked king Ahab and wicked queen Jezebel, his wife. They were the most wicked king and spouse that ever is written about in the entire word of God. But Jehoshaphat joined affinity with Ahab. Now listen, whenever countries come together or nations come together or alliances come together, I want to tell you, if you're a godly person, God warns about having uh, being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Jehoshaphat had gotten into an affinity or joined into a affinity with a relationship with King Ahab. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria and Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, the king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Now, even though here's a believer coming together with an unbeliever, I appreciate Jehoshaphat saying to Israel, Hey, before we get into this war, uh, don't you think maybe we ought to pray about it? He said, uh, Inquire, I pray thee, verse 4, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore, verse 5, the king of Israel gathered together of the prophets 400 men. Now, boy, that sounds like quite a prayer meeting until you realize these were 400 men that didn't even know God. I was listening to a prayer yesterday offered in the United States Congress. A pastor was praying, and he was praying to Jehovah, and he was pr pr praying to Allah, and he said, and the God of all names, and the gods of all people. Uh, and then he closed his prayer, and he said, Amen, and a woman. And that's the way he closed his prayer. And I will to tell you, I, when it gets down to praying, ladies and gentlemen, I want to be praying along with somebody that knows the Lord and loves the Lord and believes in the word of the Lord. And uh, the problem you see with this affinity was that Jehoshaphat knew God, but Ahab was an enemy of God. He, he hated God. And uh, so the king of Israel, verse 5, gathered together the prophets, 400 men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And the 400 men unanimously said what they thought the king wanted to hear. And so they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, uh, wait, wait just a minute, not so fast. Verse 6, Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? He says, You reckon with those 400 prophets, preachers you got over there that don't even know my God? He said, Do you feel like it'd be okay if we got uh, a prophet of the Lord and we might ask him? And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Now listen to this, folks. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he never prophesies ever good unto me, but always evil. And his name is Micaiah, the son of Enlah. 
And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. So they sent for him in verse 8. They said, Go get Micaiah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and, uh, and all the prophets prophesied. And so down in uh, verse uh, 12, it says, The messenger that went to call Micaiah spoke to Micaiah and said, Listen, the words of the prophets declare good to the king, and all, they're all together. Let your words, therefore, I pray thee, be like theirs, and speak thou good. He said, I want you to go tell the king the same thing the other 400 prophets told him. And Micaiah, in verse 13, said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God says, that's what I will speak. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I won't tell you, when you're going to be praying, you want to, you want to be praying to a God who's listening uh, you want to make sure the people who are, who are praying for you believes in God, and somebody who says whatever God tells me, that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do. So when the when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And Micaiah, with a kind of a, I'm sure he, it was in his voice and it was all over his face, he said, Oh yeah. You go do like everybody says, and they will. the enemy will be delivered into your hand. And the king smelt something fishy. Verse 15, the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing to me but the truth in the name of the Lord? And then Micaiah talked straight to him. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And then uh, King Ahab said to King Jehoshaphat, verse 17, Didn't I tell you that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? And again he said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. He said, I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, the king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one suggested one manner, and another suggested another manner. Then there came out a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? How are you going to do it? He said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord says, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now therefore, he said, Behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of your prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil against thee. And uh, so I want to tell you, they threw Micaiah in jail, threw away the key, and uh, they were getting ready to go out to battle. And uh, look up in verse 29. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Ahab said to Jehoshaphat, I'm going to disguise myself and I'm going to go out into the battle. But why don't you put on your robe? So the king of Israel disguised himself and they went to battle. Now the king of Syria, the enemy, had commanded the captains of his chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with the small or the great, save only with the king of Israel. He said, Boys, when we go into this battle, I, we're out to kill one man, the king, King Ahab of Israel. And it came to pass, Ahab, you know, had, had on camouflage and all. He had disguised himself. Verse 31, it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, this is the king of Israel. Then they realized Jehoshaphat was not Ahab. And so they left him. And verse 32, it says, For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And there was a certain man there. I love this. Verse 33, A certain man drew his bow just out of venture. He just shot his bow and arrow. He shot it up into the air just at nothing. And it came down and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness he wore. Therefore he said to his chariot, Man, turn thy hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, howbeit the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the evening. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. 
Now, guys, I want to tell you, you you might be uh, it, the enemy might be able to camouflage themselves and disguise themselves, but I want to tell you, God sees through everything, and isn't it amazing? When God's ready to deal with somebody, he's not going to let camouflage or disguise fool him. This guy shot his bow and arrow up into the clouds at nothing, and the arrow came right down, and the only place it would have killed King Ahab hit him right in the heart, and he died. Well, Jehoshaphat, chapter 19, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace at Jerusalem. And uh, Jehu, the son of Hannah the seer, the prophet, another prophet, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Now, guys, that's a great question. Should you help the ungodly people and love them that hate God? Therefore is the wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, this prophet said to Jehoshaphat in verse 3, Nevertheless, there are good things that are found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. Now Je Jehoshaphat dwelt at Jerusalem, and he went out again through the people from Beersheba to Mount Ephraim and brought them back unto the Lord God of their fathers. You see, here was a king who really wanted to do right. Now guys, I will tell you, when we... When we elect a president, when we, <laughs> when we elect uh, people to serve in Congress, when we select people to be the judges in our courts and the Supreme Court and all, it's very important. In verse 5, the Bible says that he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. Now listen to the instruction he gave to the judges. And Jehoshaphat said to the judges, Take heed what you do. For you're not judging for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in the judgment. Wherefore now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of person, nor taking of gifts or bribes. Now I will tell you, you talk about a word that needs to be spoken today in the political systems of this world are for those who come to serve uh, on behalf of God in the nations of the earth. It needs to be people who fear the Lord. And uh, so uh, verse 9, it says, He charged the judges and the elected officials, saying, Thus shall ye do in the fear of the Lord, faithfully and with a perfect heart. Now, I think, old oh man, what a leader that would say, to the judges and to the elected officials, I want you to do what God wants you to do. Don't do it respecting uh, people's persons of how much money they've got or what political party they are, and, nor taking of gifts. Don't be caught up in taking bribes. Avoid all of that. And he said, I want you to know that you're doing this for the Lord. Well, they said the enemy is coming. <coughs> And in chapter 20, it talks about the children of Moab. We know them as the Moabites. And the children of Ammon, verse 1, the, the Ammonites. And uh, they came to Jehoshaphat to battle. And somebody came up and told him in verse 2, saying, There's coming a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Ju Judah. Guys, I want to tell you, in times that we are facing right now, we need to be going to God in prayer. We need to be fasting, and we need to be praying to God for his hand on our country on uh, the illness that has swept across this land. And guys, there's so much. I, I think about all the changes that we've heard over the last few months. I, I think about how knowledge has increased and travel has increased and rules have changed. I was talking about this a few weeks ago. Goalposts have been moved. Uh, the sidelines have been altered. 
uh, drugs are everywhere, and I saw there in the Congress uh, just a, two or three weeks ago where Congress approved the sale of marijuana uh, here in America, and I thought, where, where did th does this stuff come from? With all the problems, it's like people that I tell people who dr who are drinking alcohol. I said adding alcohol when you have problems and you're 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 drinking alcohol, that's like pouring gasoline on a fire. Uh, you just some things you just can't do, guys. And I think about how the laws have changed and life and death have changed. Uh, a disease that has put fear in the hearts of people all over the world. Communication changes and the pandemic has changed so many things. And we're told that the, the virus started in a, a, a meat market in Wuhan, China. And then we were told it was brought on by American troops in another country. And then word comes out last week, no, it looks like, yes, the Chinese have, have said it did start in a laboratory in China. We were told to wear masks. Then we were told not to wear masks. We were told uh, that uh, kids, uh, you know, get uh, get them out of school, you know. Oh, no, then now they're saying the best thing is for kids to be in school. And uh, so, so many things have changed. And I think about what has happened in church life across America and the world. I've talked to pastors literally in many nations across the world over the last several weeks. I want to tell you guys, this thing has hammered hard against the church of Jesus Christ because let me tell you what the devil is wise as the serpent that he is he's the father of lies and he's going to do anything and everything he can to destroy the church of Jesus Christ and to keep God's people from getting together and worshiping together and singing praise together and studying the Bible together and just showing up and going to church and now millions of people have lost their livelihood. Millions are moving from one country to another country or from one state to another state. Oh, and we see all of these things, all the changes that have, have come about. And so we have to agree with, uh, with the king Jehoshaphat who said, O oh Lord, uh, wilt thou not judge them we have no might against this great company that comes against against us neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon thee well the bible says when he made that prayer the holy spirit showed up in verse 14 chapter 20 and verse 14 then upon jehaziel the son of zechariah the son of benaniah the son of Jael, and the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph. Then came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. I want to tell you guys, it, that is a great, great thing when the Holy Spirit shows up in the hearts and lives of His people. And this was one of the first moves that God did. It said, Our eyes are upon the Lord. Our eyes are upon thee. Verse 12. I love that old song that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Put your eyes on the Lord and you invite the Holy Spirit to come into the midst of the situation. The Holy Spirit is the one who baptizes us into the body of Christ. We are baptized by the Holy Spirit one time. But the Bible says there are going to be many fillings of the Holy Spirit. Somebody said that's because we are leaky vessels. And if you're not walking with the Lord like you, like you once did, it is time for you to again be filled with the Holy Spirit, to confess your sins and forsake your wrong ways and to forsake doing the wrong things and making the wrong choices and avoiding the right places where you should be going and, uh, and turning your eyes upon the Lord. The Holy Spirit came and he said in verse 15, Listen, all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed, 
by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. The next thing I see is when the Holy Spirit shows up, guys. The battle is no longer your battle. It's not your war. It's God's battle. For the battle is not yours, verse 15 says, but God's. And uh, so he says in verse 17, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And when he heard this, look what the king did. Now the king is like the president. He's like the, the big cheese. <laughs> it says down in verse 8, But Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Isn't it amazing what leadership can do? Isn't it amazing when, when the Holy Spirit comes into the uh, solution? And, and God says, listen, I want you to show up, but I want you to know this. You don't need to worry about fighting this battle. I'm going to take care of this for you because the battle is the Lord's. Now, guys, I want to tell you, with all we're going through right now, with all the fears of what's going to happen to our country, with all the fears of what's going to be taking place in the world, I want you to know we serve a sovereign God. God is still in control. And God, if you know the Lord is your Savior, I am a Romans 8, 28 man from the sole of my feet to the top of my head. Romans 8, 28 says this, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them which are the called according to his purpose. I, I want you to know, guys, that when you put your trust in the Lord, then you're going to be able, after you fall on your face before the Lord, they fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the, look, look down in verse 19. And what happened after they fell down and started worshiping the Lord? And the Levites, verse 19, of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites, stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. They, they got their heart right with God. They fell on their faces before God. And then they stood up and they began to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high, verse 19. And then down, uh, uh, Jehoshaphat said to the people down in verse 20, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. Well, what happened? The Holy Spirit showed up. Jehaziel spoke up. Uh, the people had to speak up. The king manned up, and he took his rightful place as a leader, and he fell on his face before God. The congregation stood up, the Bible said in verse 19, the people stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. And the choir lined up. He said, all right, boys, I want you all to get all organized because the choir is going to march out onto the battlefield in front of the army. And that's exactly what they did. Verse 21, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. I love that. You know, one of my favorite little choruses, it's amazing what praising can do. It's amazing what praising can do. I don't worry when things go wrong. He has put in my heart a song. It's amazing what praising can do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you guys, there's times even when we don't even see the answer, we have to trust God. And we have to begin by faith, praising God, praying to God, calling out. And then what happened? When the Judah, verse 24, when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, 
they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were nothing but dead bodies fallen to the earth, and not one escaped. Do you realize that the that the Lord caused them to start fighting one another? The Bible says in verse 23, the last part of that verse, the end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. The enemies started fighting each other, and not one of them escaped. Verse 24 says, none escaped another miracle. And so we say, well, man, you know, what are we going to do financially? Well, I won't tell you, do you know God, our God works financial miracles? But look at this big financial miracle down in verse 25. People say, well, where are we going to have any money to live on? Verse 25, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil from, the, from them, the dead people, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Oh, I think about how the dead people paid the bills, the, the enemy that God had taken care of. And then look down in verse 27. After all of this, they returned every man of, Ju to, of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront with them to go back to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Guys, I want to tell you the, the answer of all of this and, and what I want you to have. The Bible says the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When you walk with the Lord in the light of this word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. The last verse I want to read is down in Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 30. It says, So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. You see, what he lacked, rest and peace and joy and thanksgiving and praise, and livelihood, money to live on, all of this, it all came about when Jehoshaphat fell on his face before God. And he said, Oh God, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. God, we're going through a time right now. We don't, we don't, we don't understand everything. We don't know what all is going to be coming our way. God, how are we going to know what to do when you don't know what to do? Well, I believe this is the story, guys. It points us back to God, that we might come before God and say, Oh, God, just a prayer of David back in the Old Testament. David prayed this prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. The world at her worst needs today to see the church at her best. The world at her worst needs to see the Christian church of Jesus Christ at her very best. Let's be our best by saying to God, God, I don't know it all. Matter of fact, I don't even know much. But I'm calling on you, God. Forgive me of my sins, God. It's not my brother, not my sister tonight, oh God. It's me a standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Would you call up on God today for what is needed in your life? And could I ask you to join with me in prayer for our nation, for this world? We have a lost world. We need to be telling about Jesus. And in the midst of everything else, let's not get sidetracked. Let's not look on lesser things. But let's fulfill the purpose that God gave to us and Jesus left us. We just finished talking about the Great Commission. Go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth.
God bless you. And I'm going to be praying for you. And I'm going to be praying with you. Let's lift our country, our nation, and our church, and our family, and our homes up to God tonight in prayer. God bless you. I love you.